Right, so I'm going to do a little video here on, um, it's kind of going to be in my CNC training series. Um, this is going to just be a little video on some tools that can be used for setting uh, your dating points, your Z, all of your dating points, your X, Y, Z, um, on our CNC machine. Not specifically the work V, this can be used on uh, bigger CNC mills. Um, all sorts of machines um, they, they, these many of these tools get used in throughout the CNC world so I've got a range of different sort of tools here um, most common for measuring in CNC engineering is your 200 millimeter vernier calipers external you can measure external diameters dimensions then you've got your prongs at the top there for internal dimensions and then at the end you can measure depths so it's always nice to have a good set of verniers um, even if you're just doing I use these for anything I would say you don't need them necessarily for woodwork but they're also handy just for measuring bolt sizes drill bits uh, all sorts of things so it's always good to have a not necessarily a Mitotoya set, but a cheap set of vernier calipers is better than no vernier calipers. So we'll sh see how you, we'll show you where you where you can use those later on. So for setting your X, Y's, Z's, your date and points, you have many options. Um, one option, obviously here with the uh, Ooze Nest Work Bee, is if you was to pay. I think it's about 50 pounds they're charging. I bought it with mine, um, and it does it does save you a lot of time. Is the uh, XYZ Touch Probe? So this is a brilliant bit of kit. Um, could do with thicker wires, but it has snapped a few times. As you'll see, I've repaired it. But it is a brilliant bit of kit. You will place this over the top of your workpiece. Set your cutter. And I will show you this in a bit. Set your cutter roughly to the center of this hole. It will come over, touch on the top, set your Z, it will move over, touch on the side, set your X, come down, drop, touch on the Y, set your Y. So it will set all of your dating points. All you have to do with it is you clip this crocodile clip onto your cutter, or if you haven't got enough cutter sticking out, like well, I've, I can I can clip it onto my spindle because it's uh, it works by a, sending a little current through. So when the cutter touches the plate, that creates the circuit, and this is a uh, two-pin connector that goes into the top of the work V. And once the circuit's uh, complete, it knows that it's touching, and it uh, sets the zero. So I'll show you that. Uh, that can be used but it's not always appropriate you can't always get it where you want it and sometimes I generally only use that for setting my first zero which would normally be with a six mil carbide um, when I'm doing branding irons etc so another tool that also gets used a lot in the uh, 3d printing world for setting your uh, bed level here we go set of feeler gauges so we have a set of feeler gauges use these all the time uh, as you can see I've got the 0.1 there 0.1 I use this for setting the Z on most of my cutters on the um, on the work bee the 0.1 is the best size I think to use Just put that underneath your cutter slowly bring your cutter down in very small increments uh, sort of like 0.05 millimeters. Just you just keep wiggling it, wiggling it until you can feel just until you can feel a little bit of grip on the feeler gauge. Then once you just feel a little tiny bit pressure on the feeler gauge, you're 0.1 mil above your job, and you can use that to set your Z. You could, if you really want, you can also use that in your Y and your X and your Y. You can do the same thing. Bring the cutter down, touch on the side. It can be used for that method as well. Another way of setting your X and Y, if you haven't got some of these things, I'm showing you with a um, spot drill, but 
imagine this is a dowel. I, I, use, I used to use a dowel a lot in uh, CNC machining. Dowels are, are generally, they're very ground, they're ground to a, a tight tolerance. So this one here, if you imagine that's a dowel, 7.98 millimeters. So we've got three, so half of that, that's our diameter, half of that, our radius, is gonna be 3.99 millimeters. So what you can do is, we put this into the spindle of the CNC. Um, the work bee won't allow, allow this size because the ER11 collets don't go big enough, but put this into the spindle, drop it down to the side of your job. So if this is your job, you drop it down to the side, come in, and then as you, you, you slowly move over and spin it by hand, as you feel a little bit of tension as it's rubbing against the side of the job, stop. You now know you are, you're, one, you're the radius away from the edge of the job. So you then lift, your, lift the cutter up, move across the radius, 3.99, set that zero. Do the same for your Y, 3.99, lift it, come across, set that as your zero. You can do that with any dowel, the end of a drill bit, because drill bits are normally uh, to a good tolerance. You're basically just always setting off the radius of the job. The radius of the of the cutter, of the, the drill bit or the dowel to the edge of your job. So that's a cheap and easy way of setting your X and Ys, but it's also a very accurate way. So there's that method. Next method, and this definitely does not fit in my work bee. It won't fit into many of uh, many CNC machines. Well, home ones, industrial ones. Yep. This is called a beeper, edge finder beeper. How this works is you can just see in there. There's a little light in there, and there's a beeper in there. It's got a ball on the end, which is sprung loaded. It has a has a spring pulling this ball bearing up into the top so there's, it's got some room for movement it's basically a 10 mil ball bearing on the end you wouldn't use this for setting your Z yeah it's not made for that really uh, you can easily destroy these by winding them down too far in a Z and you'll just end up cracking crack in the end of the tool so they're, they're really edge finders made for setting your X and your Y and the way they work is inside the top here undo that there's a battery inside there this would be mounted in your spindle so you have that mounted in your spindle and then you'd wind it over and then what happens is it creates a connection you see that as it's creating a connection between the top and the bottom it bit like the uh, work B touch probe it should be a lot loud it should be a lot brighter and louder but the battery's flat you can just see there's a little light coming on in there as it makes the connection the light will light up the beep will go off and you then know you're basically minus five mil away from the uh, edge of your job so you can set your job with one of these like I say used a lot in the uh, engineering world on two axis drill mill machines not so much in the hobby world uh, another one probably a lot more accurate and not needed for hobby type work but this is a um, this is a DTI clock so a DTI clock stands for dial test indicator you get lots of different mounts with it different ways so you can mount it in your spindle with this here the way that works is this will go up into your spindle this clamp comes on the back of your there's a just see that there dovetail on the back there goes into there you can wind that on wind it up it will hold in your spindle and you can use this these are one of the most accurate ways of, of setting up a piece of work dial test indicator is extremely accurate very um, sensitive the, the as you can see you barely need to touch it 
these are used and they're great in the engineering world as you can see my vice down here so I sometimes have to take this vice off the machine because I need all of the work area if you mount one of these in your spindle you, you zero it so what you do is you just you, you move your axes until it's just until you're you're touching the zero but you can move the zero so let's just say you wind it to here then you can wind your zero round to touch it then what you would do is if you move that in your X axis you can make sure that the vice is, um, tri is, is parallel to the spindle itself so you can you can run it this is what you do on a CNC machine when you take the, the mill the uh, vice on and off you have to tram up the vise so you run it across a nice flat surface which would be one of these uh, jaws clean it off before you do it you take out the slips obviously I've got um, some parallels in there you'd run this across the across the vise and you can make sure you've got that nice and parallel with the the axes themselves you can also you also use that to do the Y so you can do the X and the Y and you can get your whole workpiece nice and parallel to the head of the machine don't use it that much now at home so much but it is an extremely accurate piece of equipment and uh, worthwhile having once again from the sort of engineering world not necessarily so much the home hobbyist but this is a Z height gauge setter so you use this on CNC mills and you can set your Z height with it you basically place it underneath your cutter you wind your cutter down until and it'll start you'll see the needle go and once it goes round and touches the zero as it says here H equals 100 so that's height equals 100 millimeters push it down until it touches that zero there like that and you'll see that's a hundred you'll you'll then be a hundred millimeters away from your surface so if you look with the vernier we touch on we move it around to zero it's hard to get on a vernier but when it's touching zero that is a hundred millimeters in height so you can this is a great way of setting your dead height for all your cutters on a CNC machine um, they're not overly expensive really uh, but they're accurate and they're, they're they're a great little tool to have and then lastly this isn't for smoking it's another method used in uh, setting the different axes Rizzler papers they're extremely thin so we'll take that one out, that's the first one got your Rizzler paper normal piece of paper because you can use your you can use normal paper a standard piece of generally a4 paper is 0.1 millimeters thickness so just like you've got your just like you've got your feeler gauges it's got that that 0.1 mil there piece of a4 paper generally is around 0.1 mil thick so that's why you can use a piece of a4 paper on your 3d printer on your router just like you can use feeler gauges but a Rizzler paper 0 0.03, 0 0.0, don't push too hard on it 0 0.03 millimeters it's about as close as you're going to get so what you can do with your Rizzler paper is you don't use it like a piece of paper normally pulling it backwards and forwards you, would, you wet the Rizzler paper so you make this Rizzler paper wet and let's say this is our job so you wet the Rizzler paper, you, you sit it on top of your job so it'll stick because it's wet. You then bring down your cutter slowly with it spinning, with it running. And as it, you'll, as you just see it rip the Rizzler paper, you, you'll know that you're then basically touching on 0.03 millimeters away from your job. So you, once again, you can use this on 
all your axes if you want. You can use, generally I only ever use it for the Z axes, but you could use it on your X and Y. You just wet the Rizzler, it will stick in place. Move the spinning cutter slowly in small increments up to it. As it rips it, as it pulls it away, you're basically spot on with your your Z, your X, your Y uh, measurements. So what we do, this is this was just a little demonstration of some of the um, some of the tools that you can buy and use to set your different axes on your machine. I'll do a quick demonstration showing you the Ooze Nest probe. <coughs> Can't show you this one because this one is too tall for the uh, it's too tall to get underneath. But as I say, you get the idea. It just pushes down until it touches the zero. Then you're on. So that's what will happen for that one. I'll give you a quick demonstration of using a Rizzler paper to set it, and then. What I've also got, but it's over in my pillar drill, I'll show you, um, is a wobbler. Let me go grab the wobbler. I'll give you a quick uh, chat talk over it, but I'm going to have to show you it working on the pillar drill. So this is a wobbler. You can get these for about, this is actually just like a £3.50 one off of uh, eBay from China. Um, you can get expensive ones but to be honest with you I used to use this one in engineering and it's uh, even for a £3.50 tool how they make it for £3.50 amazes me it comes in this little case with a spare spring um, you've got the end of your wobbler so once again you're working off of the, the radius and the diameter so the diameter of the end of the wobbler is, is 4 mil. So when, the, when this is touching the edge of your workpiece, you're minus two mil away from the edge. And the way it works, not everybody's seen these, these two discs, they're lubricated, they're connected, and they move, look, the two move apart. There's a spring that's pulling this all together. So what happens is, and I'll show you, like I say, on the pillar drill, it won't fit in the ER11 collets on here, so I can't show you it actually on the machine, not on this machine. It'll wobble, put it in the drill, it'll wobble, and I'll show you in a minute, you touch on, and as it pushes it, it will centralize the two discs, and it'll make it all, all spin. Central. And then what you can do, what you do is just, just as you push a little bit more, it will knock it, it will knock it off the center, and it will start, it will push it out. I'll show you. It's easier to show you than try to explain it, especially with my uh, explanations. So I'll show you that in a minute on the pillar drill. But first off, we'll go through these other couple of items on the work bee, and uh, I'll show you how they work. Right. So what I'm going to do for this little demo of the. Um the work we probe is I've put a piece of uh, brass in here and this is a 3mm cutter so I've got a 3mm carbide cutter in there so what we do with the work bee probe is we sit this as you can see it's got the uh, cut out there we sit this over the workpiece like that this little two pin plug plugs into the top of the uh, Z gantry. Now you can either touch your crocodile clip on your cutter like that, which in this instance you can see there's there's hardly any sticking out, so I don't like that. Or I use where the um, the two flat surfaces are for locking up the collet. I I stick the it's a bit of a got to stretch the crocodile clip a bit, but you get that on there. That's got full conductivity through the spindle anyway. So now we've got more of the more of the cutter sticking out, and I don't have to worry about uh, the crocodile clip coming off and it smashing my cutter. So what we do is I'm just going to lift this. Now we've got that in there, crocodile clip. We've plugged into the top there for the two spindle. On the work bee, you come up here to the top. So this is the. Uh, I'll just get rid of that. Air, that there. 
we've got this option here which is touch probe control most important part make sure you've got the diameter of your cutter correct and set into there and then also bring it down here you want to get that cutter roughly over roughly over the center of the hole that's there and closer so now we've got that there we just click probe corner it will say are you sure that you've got it attached um, you put, and it's and you sure it's sitting over the roughly over the holes you say yes as you'll see it's moving it will come across touches on on uh, the circuits complete so it sets that at zero sets the X at zero it will come down drop sets the Y at zero so it's a quick and easy way of setting your X Y and your Z on your workpiece is sometimes obviously cutter dependent you can't do that not every cutter will is ideal for for doing this. Um, if you've got a if you've got an Amana tools, basically V bit, I, I wouldn't use it for that. But with these carbide cutters, works fine. So that's that method. We'll just uh, that's how useful and handy that can be. And when you're setting up multiple jobs, that can save you a lot of time. So this next method is going to be using the feeler gauges the tool I keep almost forgetting the name of which is why I keep pausing uh, we move it to the center of our workpiece where we've got a nice sort of level Z and then we're going to bring the cutter down we don't need it spinning we can uh, can have it idle so what you do is you'll put you'll bring this in put this in below your cutter Get your glasses on, make sure you can see well. And then we bring it, we set it to our lowest increment movement, which is on mine is 0 0.05 of a mil. We'll just keep clicking that, and you keep giving it a little. There we go, keep moving it backwards and forth. There we go, and, I, and you can just feel it grip now. So now it's gripping, it's touching the feeler gauge. That is set, that is at 0 0.1 mil above the job. Uh, so you can use that to set your Z there at 0 0.1 mil. We can set our Z, move it back up out of the way. So that's how you use the feeler gauges. I use them, as I say, they're probably my most regular tool for setting, for setting my Z. Now, the other method, we've got the Rizzler paper. So, Rizzler paper, don't, you can't use it dry like that, it's too thin. You need to wet it, so I'm just gonna wet this. We wet the Rizzler paper, and then what will happen, if I can get it in there. We wet that and stick that to the top of our job. Like I say it's 0 0.03 of a millimetre this Rizzler paper. So that's now stuck on the top of our job. Gonna need to turn the spindle on. Doesn't need to be travelling very fast. Just get the spindle turned on, just gotta turn on the VFD. So we can run the spindle slow, very slow. That's enough. It's at 1000 RPM, doesn't need to be going very fast. Now what we can do is, we just bring this down slowly, small increments again. We bring it down until we just see it grab the Rizzler paper. Just as it grabs the Rizzler paper and tries to pull it off the job, we're basically we're at 0 0.03, we're basically touching the Z. You can use this in your X and your Y. So, it's almost touching now. Uh, 
Uh, it's hard to see on that, but that has actually just ripped the center. If you had a bigger cutter, that would have that would have pulled it away more. But it has actually just gripped the center of the Rizla paper and pulled it away. So you would now set your Z with that there. Generally, if you're doing this sort of on the side of your work, it will rip the Rizla paper right away. If you had a bigger cutter, that would have ripped away. But you can see it's made a hole because it's just taken the Rizla paper away. Um, a lazy but a lazy way of setting your Z, uh, or a lazy way of setting any of your things is you can run the cutter, have the cutter running, and wait till you just. I do do it a lot on wood to be honest because it doesn't need such a tight tolerance. Have the cutter running, bring it down just as you see a little sliver of wood, a little sliver of metal come off. It's touching, it's not the most accurate way, uh, but it depends what you're machining because to be honest with you. If you're just cutting out a profile, you you don't need you don't need microns of uh, accuracy. So we'll stop that. And that was a demo of the uh, the touch probe and the two other methods. So what I'm going to do is take this over to the pillar drill. I'm going to show you how this wobbler works. Right, so here we are, we've got our wobbler. We're gonna mount this into our chuck. So we just get this mounted in there. There it is, we get that mounted in there, give that a wiggle. Right, so the wobbler, you'd obviously normally have in your CNC machine, not in a pillar drill, but this is just one, my chuck's not big enough on the uh, CNC, so I'm just gonna show you in here. Once you start it spinning, as you can see, it's wobbling. So it's off center at the moment, it's wobbling. If we use this, say this is our workpiece. I'll come in from the back so you can see a bit better. What you're gonna do is you wind your wobbler by hand or CNC, move it slowly at uh, increments. And you move, and as it comes in and gets close to the workpiece, so now that's it, that's, you can see, spinning dead center the two discs are spinning dead center so you wind it in as it touches dead center you're now one you're with the radius of the tip away from the edge of the job and then when you know when you, when you've gone too far if you wind it too far you know that because you'll see the two discs separate like that you'll just see one one of them jump off the other one so now I've gone past my center so I just slowly wind it back come back again until it's on centre without knocking it off and I'm touching at my radius. Because this one hasn't been used for a while, it's not as wobbly as it uh, was and probably needs a bit of a lubrication in there but if you just give it a little wiggle, get the wobble back, make it really wobble up. Once again come in, touch on, there, spinning dead centre you're now touching your radius away from the edge of your job. Go too far, knocks the two discs apart. So you know you've gone too far. So at, the, at that point where they're spinning dead center, your, what was it, it was four mil, wasn't it? So you're two mil away from the edge of your job. So what you can then do is lift your cut, lift your wobbler up or drop your job, move across two mil, set zero. Same in this axis, touch on, stop, drop move set zero and that is how you would use a wobbler so hopefully there's been a few tools in there that you've uh, not seen before or not seen used and don't know how to use um, thanks for watching the video I often will just use this so I, I set this corner down here for my woodwork that is my zero in X and Y I know that this corner is zero, so I don't have to clock up the, the, the X and the Y as long as it's touching these. These have been skimmed um, with the spindle parallel to the axes, X and Y axes. So I'll set this. All I'll then set is my Z each time I um, start a job. 
so I hope that's been helpful hope you've learned a few bits and thanks very much for watching um, as you can see is all my branding iron examples so if you'd like a branding iron or some maker discs check them out on my um, Instagram or Facebook page and uh, let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see if there's any more specific parts of the setting up CNC and I can then try and make videos to cover those uh, those subjects so thanks very much please subscribe like and uh, come back for the next video thank you